Hello again, YouTubers. How's it going? I am here with a new exciting acquisition. The knife is called the District 9. I believe the model is the D9-B. That's Bravo. There's an A model. That's very, very similar to the same handle, except the milling doesn't look the same. It has some... Uh, really thin lines that run parallel really really thin kind of like half the width of this up here and the color anodization is a bronze rather than the, the light purple you see here so it's made by this company called Riate or Reet or Riat <laughs> however you want to pronounce it I've heard it pronounced many different ways. And I've also seen this knife made by a few different manufacturers, or at least I've seen it with different logos on the blade. This is the best variation I've seen of this model because of one key thing, the titanium pocket clip that is not just a standard spring clip. As you can see, it is CNC'd out and looks really awesome very robust, very custom looking or even you know mid-tech if you will but this is a very exciting knife for me and I think it will be for a lot of others if you're looking for this type of knife that is there's a lot of mid-tech knives out there that are at this price point that have a lot of uniqueness to it but this is more of that built like a tank, overbuilt pry bar type of knife. So if you're looking for something that's just not necessarily as practical as it could be because of its mass, but has a real, you know, aesthetically pleasing wow factor, then this is the knife for you. This knife has a lot of really good materials, has an excellent price point, and has excellent fit and finish. And, and design. So a little background, this is a Chinese company. All of the iterations of this knife, regardless of their logos, have been Chinese produced. And they have a, a few different models out. They've had the Horizon, they just recently released the Hills, all of which were flippers. Uh, some pretty significant differences between these models I'm mentioning. But they're all customizable from the manufacturer. You can contact them. They will take orders, from my understanding, on any of their existing models. And they're pretty generous with what they're willing to do for you. Of course, it, it comes at a cost. This one's $200, and this is kind of out of the box, as you could say, the way they, they ship them out, uh, standard or default. So if you want something different, you're going to pay for it. But I've seen the pricing, and it's very reasonable. It's very exciting to me. I'm going to be pursuing a custom Hills uh, flipper from Riate because I am so impressed with their overall quality and design that I have no problem spending a little extra money to get something that is truly unique and one of a kind, especially at this price point. At $200, you're getting a half pound knife. <laughs> I'm rounding up. It's actually 7.4 pounds on my scale. I think they they listed at 7.8 pounds, but you get the point. It's a heavy knife. There's heavier, of course. It could always be worse. <laughs> but I have to say, you notice how substantial it is when you hold it. But because of its design and the slimness of the actual, I guess, the the thickness, rather, or lack thereof, it is actually very comfortable in the pocket for its weight. If I compare it to some of my sub three ounce uh, EDC knives, well, then if you compare them, this thing's gonna be like carrying around a cinder block. But I've carried knives that are much lighter in my, po uh, you know, when, on the scale, but actually suck in the pocket just because of how they carry, how their design is. This is comparable uh, in the pocket. To, I think it's probably thinner even than uh, a Griptilian. 
So a full size group telling that is. Um, it might be close. Anyway, it's very comfortable in the pocket and actually pretty comfortable in the hand. This knife has S35 VN blade steel. They have a heat treat on it of roughly 59 to 60 Rockwell hardness. The other variation comes with a drop point. As you can see, this one's a Tanto blade design. The pivot system here on the inside is on ball bearings, not washers, so it's very smooth. Very, very smooth and fast deployment, as you can see. The anodization is pretty cool. It's got this purple color, and I hope I can capture it. I might have been better off giving you like a white backdrop. But the purple can come out pretty strong um, until you get your, your hand oils on it. And then it starts to turn more of a gray slate color with just a mild purple undertone, which is pretty cool. I am not a huge purple type person, <laughs> but I didn't have anything in my collection with purple, and I really liked the way this looked, so I went for it. And I think it's subtle. I don't think it's Barney purple. I don't look at this and say, this is my Barney knife. This is just pretty cool. Actually, it reminds me of something more space age, like... Boba Fett meets Halo, the video game Halo, kind of space age look. That's what it reminds me of. It's really awesome. The backspacer here, as you can see, is anodized bronze. And so is the titanium pocket clip. And I think that gives a really good contrast. I think I really like the looks of it. Kind of a Lakers theme, I guess you could say. <laughs> anyway, the Knife is robust, but it is very, very well built. I cannot believe it's only $200. If that's in your price range, or if you're looking at other knives for $200 and you're not looking for something that's specifically going to be an everyday carry knife, I would strongly recommend you consider this. At least save the receipt, buy one, and return it or resell it if you want because it's worth at least checking out. Or if you have the opportunity to handle one, I, I would recommend it. It's a great option. Although it's very big and robust, it is something that you'll be surprised at how much you want to put it in your pocket and carry it with you. Again, because it's not overly thick. And it does feel pretty good in the hand, considering how, how large everything is. Sorry about the, if you're hearing the turkey clucking noises, that's just my phone. Anyway, the thumb stud, you actually can deploy it with the thumb stud. It, it does work. It's not the I ideal way of deploying it, in my opinion, but it works just fine. The detent is extremely strong on this knife. Um, 1 to 10, probably a 8, 7 and a half, 8, so very strong. And I really like that because it, it helps to produce a really, really nice flipping action, as you can see. And this is a really good flipping action. The design on it is great because you can button press it, and you can very comfortably light switch it. Very, very nice. Extremely solid lockup. It's just it's a perfect lockup. There's no wiggle, no clicking, no blade play, no movement whatsoever. You're looking at it about roughly a 30% lockup there. Maybe 35. And as you may have noticed, there is a steel lock bar insert. It's the only way to go in my opinion. Yes, you can carbonize titanium. But still, that uh, tungsten starts to wear through over time. And I just, you know, then you get down to the titanium again. It's definitely better than no carbonizing, but this is the ideal option for me. I also like the fact that you can re replace this piece if you need to. So, pretty awesome in design. Also, you'll see on the back here there is the Hinderer style over travel stop disc okay 
So that's going to, if you're not aware, this is a frame lock and this part of the frame that engages and locks the blade open, when you disengage it like this, you don't want to you know, push it out this way too far because you can ruin the tension on this on this lock bar here. So this disc will stop that from happening so you can't overextend when you're disengaging the lock and you're pushing it this way. You won't be able to push it too far. But they went above and beyond and the steel lock bar insert in here extends to the rear of the, of the knife or the back of the knife. And as you can see when I rotate this and you get the light in there you see a little tab towards the end right there. That's the part of this lock bar insert, the steel one right here, that goes all the way through and behind this side of the handle scale. So it catches and stops this lock from going past in two different locations. Stops it on the disc and then stops it at the top here too. So just added safety and security on that. I think that's pretty cool. Again, just little, these little things are not standard. And the more manufacturers see them and people talk about them and it's well received, the more standard they become, but usually at a cost. People usually have to pay extra for features. So, you know, I remember when knives were made and they didn't have any sort of over travel. I mean, there's still locks, uh, knives like that, really good knives, really expensive knives. Um, I think the Chris, Re Chris Reeves Sabenza. I don't think that has an over travel disc and that's a great knife <laughs> so just little things do you need it no but would you like it yeah why not it doesn't hurt anything so I, I'm, I'm glad it has all these features that that really matter to me anyway as you can see the the pivot screw or the pivot pin it's really overbuilt and robust it has this stainless steel collar around it that's got like a brushed finish I think it's kind of nice. I don't know if it necessarily goes with this. It's a stonewashed anodization on this titanium handle here. And I don't really know if it goes with the overall worn, weathered theme. But I actually kind of like the contrast. Because everything's, you know, you have this really nice stone washing on the handle. I'm sorry, on the blade. And then you have this aggressive stone washing over the anodization on the handle. So you kind of have that overall, like I said, Baba Fett worn look. And then you have this. So either you're going to look at that as it's out of place, or you're going to look at that as it's a cool contrast. That's how I look at it. Same thing with this here. This this could be roughed up a little bit more. But if you wanted to, you could disassemble this and just stonewash it. Or acid stonewash it, even. It is steel. So Anyway... I really love the design. The blade is really cool too, the, the grind. It's going to probably be like a love-hate. I don't know, it looks like a profile of like a shark head or something. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a kind of unique Tanto design. The grind is very, very much, it just kind of holds off till the very end there and then it tapers down, which makes for a very robust, strong blade tip very strong and then it's um, got a good it's got a good angle here it's not as boxy at the end as it is a lot of tantos are but it's still got a, a real strong definitive transition and angles here so uh, some of them like the Decepticon video I don't know if you've seen the one I did and it has somewhat of a tanto design but it's a lot less pronounced this is very pronounced but the grind is very consistent on both sides. Okay. The symmetry is very good. It's the same with the cutting edge. It's very consistent on both sides. And I'm really happy to see that. That's really important to me. And that shows that they have really good consistency in machining. The technology they're using works. And uh, very important, it's sharp as hell. You could spend a lot of time being frustrated with Chinese made knives because a, a thing that you'll see consistently is that they come dull and a lot of times the heat treats on their steel suck. That's not the case, neither of those are the case with this knife. I've actually went out and thumped on this thing quite a bit 
and the heat treat's outstanding. It's not a weak S35VN whatsoever. It's a very good. It's it's very comparable to. It reminds me of when I was out there beating on my Doug Ritter Griptilian, and that's S30V. They're very comparable steels. This is a slight step up, and this S35VN is is outstanding. They did a good job. So it's coming sharp. It's coming well machined, and the grind is consistent, and the fit and finish is consistent. So really everything I'm looking for is here in this knife, including a very smooth action. You can tell that it's on ball bearings because of how smooth it is. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've seen some washer knives that are very smooth as well. Okay, but this, this is just very, very smooth. I think it's going to be a happy medium for some people that uh, are real particular about the knife blade action. What I'm referring to is some people, they'll be very happy to see how smooth and fast the deployment is. But some people I've heard complain and they say, I don't like it when you just hold the blade like this and it will close on its own because of the blade weight. It's that free. And this doesn't. It, it glides closed so smoothly and so effortlessly if you just give it a little nudge. See, see how smoothly that comes down? But it doesn't just drop on its own. And me, I don't care about that. I, I, I'm comfortable. I've handled flipper knives and just folding knives in general so much that it could close in any way, shape, or form. And I'm not going to worry about hurting myself or it cutting me because I know how to handle the knife. But for some people, they know how to handle knives too. They just prefer not having to worry about that. They just don't like that feature. One knife that is kind of like what I'm describing is the 0560 black wash. This thing, I don't really have to wiggle very much in most cases. See, it just closes on its own. See that? It's very, very freely moved, and it just kind of falls closed. I don't have to wiggle it at all. I just rotate the handle, and it, it keeps moving. Again, I think that's cool. I think it's nice and really good action, but I just wanted to point that out, just an observation, in case that's something that matters to you. This is very smooth, as you can see. Very, very smooth. You can kind of feel a little bit of resistance like I can in most quality actions. Ball bearings, washers aside, doesn't really matter. I still feel a little bit of friction when the blade is rotating on the pivot when, you're, when you have the handle in your hand. You can actually feel, if you're looking for it, that friction. And it's a low friction. It's, it, it's to be expected. It's still of high quality. When I go to something like the the Decepticon or a Will Moon custom knife, something like that, I don't feel any friction. It just glides like it's floating on air whenever that blade is rotating on the pivot pin. That's been my experiences with the knives that I own and the knives that I've handled so far. So just another comparison. Again, the action is silky smooth. It's outstanding. But you can almost hear or feel a little bit of that friction in there, which is to be expected. Anyway, the centering is absolutely perfect. Oops, sorry about bumping that there. Let's get this focused if we can. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, the thumb studs, like I said, they work, but they work primarily as a blade stop, stop pin. Okay, you will notice, if you look closely there, that they're not perfectly centered in this groove here. Uh, it doesn't bother me, I don't mind, and I don't believe it could be 100% perfect. In other words, I don't feel like if they would have made an adjustment in their design when they were machining this out, that they could have made it so that way the center of this stop pin lined up with the center of this indentation or groove right here. I think it could have been very close but if you think about it, this the stop pin or the thumb stud has to pivot, swivel out and down a little bit. So it has to be a little bit, very minor, but it has to have a little bit extra space on this side of the groove here so that way there's clearance for that thumb stud to get out of it. But again, I, I think that you could definitely tighten it up a little bit more, but I, I don't really care. It's making perfect contact on both sides 
and it's locking it up solid. Again, like I said, there's no blade play, movement, clicking, wiggling, front to back, side to side, any in any way. It's very, very solid. There is excellent jimping on the back here. It's not quite as aggressive as, for example, like a paramilitary 2, but it has a very similar footprint or pattern. I just don't think the cuts on the jimping were quite as deep, that's all. But it is definitely adequate. It works very well. It gets you a really good purchase and grip with your thumb. You'll also notice that you have some larger, more spread out jimping on the back area right where that flipper is, which normally is oftentimes a deal breaker for me. I do not like to have an uncomfortable flipping action where when I flip the knife out, my finger hits the jimping and it tears up my finger like Jason Brouse Bionic Blade. That was a deal breaker. I had to mill that off. This is not the case. See where my finger is? That's where it lands after I flip it. And I do not come into contact with this. Even if I did, it, it will give you extra traction, so that's good. The edges on there are good enough to actually work as a functional jimp, but it's not going to tear your hand up. If you're if for some reason you flip it like button press or something and, and you catch maybe one of those, it's not going to hurt your finger. There's more jimping on the lock bar inner choil here. Um, this could be angled. That would be nice. This right angle or 90 degree angle that I'm pointing at right here where you push in with your thumb to disengage the lock bar. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. I, I flip this thing a ton and I've never felt uncomfortable by doing this at all. Not even a little bit. But I can. I, I think it would just be smoother and it would just feel better if that was angled. Kind of like it's angled right here to give you access to that lock bar. That would have been a good idea. They do that with the... I think they do that with the Southern... If I remember correctly, let me take a look and see if I'm crazy or not. No, they do. Cool. So yeah, this is kind of what I'm talking about. If they were to just give it a little angle, that way when you put your finger or your thumb in there to disengage that lock bar, it would just be all the more comfortable. So anyway, this is an outstanding knife. I, I wanted to just demonstrate just how smooth and nice the action is all the awesome features that it has to offer right there it says district nine okay very sterile blade that's another thing i like it's not all gunked up with a bunch of crap all over it all you have is s35 vn on it and then their logo they didn't crud it all up with a bunch of, of shit that takes away from the knife so that's pretty cool it's not a walking billboard so that's good it feels real good in the hand when it's closed. Uh, it's got kind of this symmetric curve. You have the angles like this and the straight angle on the back. Folds up pretty nice. It's not super wide, so it's not going to fill your whole pocket when it's in there. You have hardened steel screws for all the hardware. That's what that is. And they've been kind of darkened. I really like that. Then you have just standard steel screws with a black coating for the disc and for the steel lock bar insert and the only steel on this knife is the pivot pin, the collar around it, the thumb studs, the screws here and the screws there. This disc is also titanium and you know what, let me double check that <laughs> Pretty sure it was. Hmm. I take that back. I think that is steel as well. So, everything else is titanium. But what you're looking at is a lot of materials, a lot of quality materials that have been put together with pre precision. And if you like the way it looks, and you will like the way it flips, it is an extremely awesome deal for a hundred bucks. Extremely awesome. Another thing I wanted to point out that makes the flipping so much nicer of an, uh, of an experience is they put some really appropriate jimping on the flipper. 
It's not aggressive, it's just perfect. It just gives you a little extra grip and traction, so it doesn't feel like your finger is going to slide off that thumb stud, I'm sorry, the flipper at all. And the flipper is not ridiculously protruding or super long or curved really weird. People try to get all super crazy and creative and they'll have it angled up one way and it creates a hot spot when you're actuating it or it'll be freaking sharp or pointy. This is super comfortable and you're, you're going to just love flipping it. So there are other options like I said you can customize it, you can get the bronze version, the D9-A that'll give you a bronze handle. Uh, depending on where you get these depending on where you get these you're going to see different pocket clip options. I got this one from Blade HQ and it's the only way I would buy it. When I speak to Riate, I think there's a gentleman there that you usually interact with, Dave I think his name is, I'm going to make sure it's super important for me to not have a spring clip, even if it's titanium. You'll see that on if you go to GP Knives or Arizona Custom Knives, they sell these. And you'll see that the, the pocket clip on them is different. It's not a big chunk of, of titanium nicely machined like that. It's a spring clip. It's thinner and it's been curved a certain way to apply pressure. It's a spring clip. They'll sometimes do cool textures or anodization on them, but it's still just a spring clip. This is much higher quality and that matters to me. I like that a lot. So I'm going to make sure that whatever I get from them in the future has this, this quality clip. And if you like that and that matters to you, Blade HQ is the place to get this variation of clip on this knife. You can find the same knife in other places, but you're not going to find this clip. But if that doesn't matter to you, then don't even worry about it. Really great design, really great price, really great company. They've been coming out with a lot of really good options. I can't wait to see what else they come out with and get my hands on it. And I, I'll, I'll have to do some reviews on that when I do get them in. I hope you like this. As a comparison, I wanted to show you just color a couple other options before I wrap this up. A couple other flipper options. I showed it to you before the zero tolerance 0560 uh, black wash edition, as you can see there. This knife has some sort of black coating that they did an extremely aggressive and really cool stone wash finish on it. And I love the way it looks, I really do. The, the, this is one of the coolest parts about it. This pattern is almost always, it is always done on the 0560s. But when it's got this black wash and then they they must have sanded it, the peaks show through the silver titanium and then the valleys and all these different rivets here show you that dark anodization. So it gives you really cool contrast. It just looks awesome. Titanium on one side, steel liner on the other, covered by G10. These are contoured, so this is very comfortable in hand. Again, jumping on the back, which works. It's not quite as good as the Riate District 9's uh, jimping, but this jimping's good. Again, has stainless steel stop pins that can also be used as a thumb deployment. As you saw before, very smooth action. The detent's a little weak, and I don't really like the curvature on the flipper because it has this sharp point. They could have just rounded that off. But it flips nice. It's a very, this is a great knife. For zero tolerance, this is kind of a game changer for them. They've since, I'm going to show you the other comparison, had a better option in my opinion, but this is awesome. Great knife, flat grind, swedge on the back, really nice blade design, drop point, nice belly on it. They use shit steel, Elmex, but <laughs> sorry to form an opinion like that. Not all Elmex is crap. I'm just not an Elmex Elmax fan in general, especially from Zero Tolerance. They've had some problems before. Overall, it's gonna probably get the job done. I just would rather have 
complete confidence in the steel, and LMAX is usually not my favorite option. One thing I really don't like about this knife, and that's why I'm going to carbonize it, is there's no steel lock bar insert. And as you can see, the lockup's not late. It's about 50% there. But I don't want it to get a whole lot later. It'll be okay if it does. I just It w doesn't wear very well titanium to steel. So I'm going to carbonize the top of this, and then it'll be awesome again. Nice deep carry. Again, not super thick. So it's pretty comfortable in pocket. Flow through design. Talking price, you get bl better blade steel on the District 9. You're getting more titanium. There is a lot of machine work and all this pattern and the finish on the Zero Tolerance. But you're getting a higher quality material overall on the District 9 and more of it for less money. That's right, less money. So this is a great, great knife. The cheapest I've seen it's on Amazon recently. It was for $215 or $217. You might be able to find them cheaper on eBay or something like that. But what I'm saying is for a little bit more money, you're getting an American-made knife, which is pretty cool. That, that, that matters to a lot of people, and I, I like that. If I could choose that, I, I would. I did. That's why I own that. But you got to admit, you're getting a, a hand assembled in, in, in some aspects of this hand fitted knife which makes it a mid tech so which makes it a little bit more collectible and there's a little bit more to be said for a mid tech knife rather than a standard production knife in fit and finish and quality control and you have that with more material with somewhat cooler design in my opinion at a lesser cost this is still a great knife, don't get me wrong. Another example. Oh yeah. The 0562 carbon fiber variation. Very, very awesome knife. This is, I believe it won the award, I think it was at Blade Show, for Zero Tolerance, of course. I think it was the, they won the best American or US produced blade. I believe that's what they want it for. Doesn't surprise me. I have a lot to say about that knife. It's outstanding. I'll do a separate review on it. It's They're all very similar. They have carbon fiber. I'm um, sorry. They have titanium uh, frame locks. And they have really, really great flipping actions. They're all flippers. This This one has... An extremely strong detent. 10 out of 10 strength and detent. But it goes flying out. It's such a great action. That one's on, on ball bearings as well. I think I think this 0560 is on ball bearings too. Yeah, it is. So they're all on ball bearings. So these are good comparisons. They're all flippers. They all have titanium. They're all frame locks. They got it right on this one though. They put a, a steel lock bar insert inside, which is that's what that's holding in on the 0562. Zero tolerance. They're a big company. Live and learn. They have they need time to to learn what's not a trend and what is actually a valuable feature. And a steel lock bar insert on a frame lock is or any titanium handled knife is the way to go. And so they're doing that now. This knife is outstanding. It's a little bit smaller, although you're going to get about the same cutting edge as you would on the District 9. You're going to get a better blade steel. It's M390 compared to the S35VN on the, on the District 9. So better blade steel, better blade design. But what we're really talking about here is this is more of a practical knife the 0562 and so is the 0560 this is much more substantial more robust more hoss if you will it is thick and beastly and it's really almost it's not a novelty but it's it's more just a collection piece it's, you can definitely use this you can carry it it's going to be comfortable enjoyable 
But this is something you can EDC. It's more, maybe more on the heavy side of an EDC, being over five ounces, but you can still EDC it. And you can use that blade design for freaking anything. Anything. That slicer grind is awesome. And you have an outstanding blade steel. So this is you know why it's winning awards. It's kind of it's 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 machined, it's manufactured with great tolerances and precision, which I'll elaborate on in its review. But again to compare, I think this is two hundred and forty dollars for the 0562. I could be wrong, maybe it's two fifty or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's two forty though. So for forty dollars more you're getting better blade steel, you're getting a knife that you can do a lot more with. But I don't think it has the same sort of impact as far as collectability goes as the District 9. It's not a mid-tech. And don't get hung up with labels, I'm just saying it's kind of cool to know if you're, you know, if, if you are having a conversation about this or you're comparing blades with a buddy. You can say, you know, this is a mid-tech, this, this was manufactured in China which normally is not something that you would boast about but it is hand assembled to a certain extent and there's a lot more attention to detail and there's a lot of uniqueness about it there isn't a ton of these being produced I don't think that there's as much of a mass production of these District 9's as there are zero tolerance models generally speaking the 0562 may be somewhat of an, ex of an exception to your standard production levels that you'd normally see. Usually there's thousands and thousands of them out there floating around over the years. I don't know what's going to happen with the District 9. I know that they go in very small batches. They go to you know, a handful of distributors and you know, go to, like I, I named a few. You're only going to find them in a handful of distributors and when they're gone, they're gone for a little bit until the next batch comes in. I've kind of seen something similar happen with the 0562s, but I know that they are producing them on a much larger level. The 0560, there's, it's very typical to what I was describing of production quantities. There's tons of them out there. So you're probably going to see a lot more people with a zero tolerance, either one of these, than you do with one of these District 9s. Nine times out of ten, you're probably, if, if you're going to see somebody with one of these, you're going to see them with a zero tolerance first. So that's another kind of cool factor if that matters to you. So I think these are a little bit closer as far as value go. Okay, because you are getting for only $40 more some really nice materials and a better blade steel. M390 steel is freaking awesome. It's really, really, really good blade steel. Don't get me wrong, so is S35VN. It's great, but it doesn't compare to M390. They're close, kind of, <laughs> but M390's top tier super steel. There's there's always better, there's better than M390 as well, but the you know, if it, uh, one it, you can't even really give it a scale because when you have different qualities of steel, they they're kind of there's nothing that's just across the board better. You know, if it excels dramatically in one aspect, then a different aspect of the steel may be a little more lacking. They're both very well-rounded steels. I'm just saying the M390 is more expensive and more more valuable, and it's a better quality overall. So it's only 40 bucks more, and you're getting that, and you can use the blade in a lot more ways. So if you're really looking for a real user knife, go with the Zero Tolerance. But if you're looking for something you can still definitely use, but it's much more collectible, and it's just something special about it, then there's your District 9 right there. And again, if you don't like the Tanto, get the, the drop point. You know, if you like something a little more like these, they make that in the District 9. I just, as you can see, I have plenty of drop point. And I really liked, I thought this was a somewhat unique Tanto design, so that's why I went with it. But these are some, I think, pretty solid comparisons. And I think I've established some of the differences, uh, what the expectations and what the roles that these knives all fall into, but they're similar as far as materials go and, and price point. So I hope you liked the review. If you have any other questions, let me know. Oh, one other thing, <laughs> I just don't want to confuse anybody. This knife doesn't come with these blue anodized titanium uh, hardware. That was aftermarket. It usually comes with, I think these are all black coated steel. Okay, same, same on this side, the disc as well, the screw, Actually, I think the disc is like a silver steel. 
and then the pivot pin is like that custom zero tolerance you see on the 0801 a lot of knights have that now it's just a steel kind of custom looking pivot on both sides that matches so this is just something aftermarket that I did which I'll go into in its own review so I hope you like this I hope I got everything if you have any questions please let me know same with comments I always appreciate and value your feedback and thank you very much for watching. Take care.